trust what anyone says. I need to see. You'll be misleading. But you I know what to... I'm looking to forward forward to finding out. I hope we do. These Texas police that let the kids get shot for what 45 minutes in the school. Is it true? I mean, I've seen the video of them yeah. like holding parents. Back. Could you could you fill me in on what? what, what so was as that? you know, there was a school shooting, yeah. an elementary school shooting, two days ago, I think, and. Um, uh, I don't know how many people died, but it was a lot. I, the number keeps going up. It was up. like high it teens, like, I think. Yeah, it's like 19. High teens. I think they were younger 19? Goodness. Crazy. Okay. <laughs> Phil, you making jokes. <laughs> so, um, anyway. Uh, oh, oh. So, now video has come out of the police not going in. They put yellow caution tape around the building. <laughs> they stopped the parents from coming in. They secured the site and seemingly worse. 19 kids, two teachers, not enough. Worse. It's worse than that. They, they yeah. seemingly gave the shooter all the time and space he needs. This is during the, the shooting. Yeah. 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 So this it's, is an active and shooter. They just block it, like sort of wrapped the school in caution tape and told everyone to stay away. Just gave him 40 minutes to kill people. It's, it's worse oh, than 45. that. 45. Good. All that's all that's accurate, and it's worse than that. Um, when he showed up, there were two there were two uh, officers there, and they ran away from him. Um, they ran away from him and called for help, <laughs> and then he went inside and killed everyone. So he, he two officers ran away. He from wasn't in a firefight with those officers. He I, he shot. They they were in a firefight, and they ran away. He won the firefight somehow. They escaped with minor injuries, which when cops say that. It means nothing. It means they were scared. Mm -hmm. It means nothing when a cop says minor. They injuries. hurt their feelings because because when it's time because when it's time <laughs> to get insurance listen. benefits or write something up for somebody to get a fucking medal, if he'd scraped his knee, they'd have fucking said, "Oh, contusions to the leg and and mm -hmm. and bleeding injuries." His his uniform was ripped from his body, dude. You blew the knee out in your jeans, like that's yeah. what it would be. It, it, you but, tripped over the. Curve. But instead, it's like two two officers received minor injuries. I want to see if he actually had body armor on too, because that's one of the things the cops said. Um, I want to know what kind of gun he had and, and what his what he looked like to make two cops run away and let him go in there with all those children. And now, I, I did hear this, Kyle. I don't know how I heard this one little bit, but apparently that plate holder he had, nothing was in there. Um, <laughs> there I, was I nothing this, in the plate holder. The left I, keeps making this point. The day he turned 18, the shooter, he bought two AR-15s. And they're like... He used two guns for the shooting? I don't that, know. I haven't even heard what he used for the shooting. I only know that he owns two AR-15s. Uh, okay. So what it sounds like to me, like like the way that they're kind of talking around what kind of gun he used, because what they keep saying is like he used a handgun and, and he may have had used a rifle. Like like you don't know. Well, he owned two. Did he use them? Is that how he? And, and the point isn't. I don't give a shit what kind of gun was used from a political standpoint. I still want to know how he made these cops run away in fear. These these good old boy Texas fucking sheriff's deputies or whatever, whatever the fuck that were cowardly enough to hide outside. And then like the worst part is, and I can't even watch it, is when they're like holding a, a parent on the ground who's trying to get inside to save his children. And it's like, why, why, you're lucky the parents didn't shoot you pigs. It's fucking disgusting. What the fuck? It, it's and I, I, I so bet, no, no answers have come out surrounding I want to see and I really want to see like how they Ongoing. eventually killed killed the shooter because I, I wouldn't be it sounds like they're so fucking cowardly that maybe he walked outside finally was out of ammo and then they shot him when they were sure he couldn't pose any threat I wouldn't be surprised if that's the case which good job kill him but I'm just saying like they hid the whole time and that's the first lesson that law enforcement and the world in general learned about school shootings after Columbine is that you don't wait outside. That's what they did at Columbine. The police yeah. waited outside because there was no, um, there, there was no known uh, protocol. You didn't know what to do because you never imagined that the people inside were there to exterminate. Sure. You thought this was a hostage taker and that they would have demands because mm -hmm. and that's traditionally how law enforcement handled any scenario like that. Somebody's in a bank. Well, no, we're not going to storm in. We're going to see what they want. Yeah, but in this scenario, they want to kill children, and they wait outside and uh, and let them all die. That's definitely what happened. So, and they don't. They're still investigating, seeing like if, I don't the, know how if the officers those, were told to stand down or something or what. Those guys, what those happened? guys ran. Those guys ran. Those guys were scared. Um, it was I'm terrible. terrible. And, but and it wouldn't. It wouldn't just be those two guys. Like no, they, all the cops. If there were. Uh, if there was well, enough time for them to wrap the school in tape, it wasn't just two guys who ran away and then came back and taped it. It, it would have been like the it was entire department PD policy being told to, be to hold a pussy. off. Yeah, and uh, by the way, there was some policeman who had parents inside, 
and they were allowed to go in and retrieve their kids. Yeah. But all the all the normal oh, non cop parents, you know, they, they can't go yeah. back there. I forgot that little bit. Yeah. No, Some that's of the cop, ridiculous. The only cops who went in saved their own children and then ran away with them. It is <laughs> it, it, it. Those cops should all be in prison for the rest of their lives. That, 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 that should be they should be getting rounded up and humiliated on TV right now. Their their pictures with the word coward should be underneath it. Like like. like the president should be calling them cowards. Like, like it, they should be publicly shamed until they can't have employment anymore. You what want to is, cancel uh, somebody? What's the source? These are the guys. Who is who's like the head PD person? Like their chief. What what's that person been saying? Are they coming out like I can't believe the cowardice of people not going in? Or like, no, well, well they, we used the information we had at the time, and the information said to let someone shoot in the building for forty five minutes. No, Captain. Cows, do you remember where you heard that about the police officers getting their kids out but no one else? Uh, I've, read, I've read that in two or three different sources. I think I saw that on a CNN article. There's I, I heard one way the other about that. I hadn't heard that piece of information. It's kind of every, disturbing. That's I've, been trying, if that's I've been trying not to even look at it because it's so fucking sad. I knew they were going to show those little children's faces. That was fucked. That cute little kids with his little hair parted. It's like they're all, you know, this is like picture day pictures. It's all these cute little fucking kids. And and then I saw the text message from the, the shooter. And he was like having an argument with his grandmother over his cell phone. She turned his cell phone off. And then the next he, he's like, he's like, She's like, she turned, she's on the phone with AT&T about my phone. And then the next te text message is, I just shot my grandmother in the head. Who is right, he texting? Like a buddy, I guess. I don't know. And uh, and then he's like, and then the text message right after that is, I'm going to go shoot up an elementary school now. And then like the reply comes hours later and it's like, I just saw the news. And it's like, fuck, How, who was that person? Well, have they uncovered anything else about like his, this guy's motives or anything? I saw his grandfather, I, or at least that's what it looks like, interviewed. Um, and and he doesn't know shit. Like, 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 like nobody seems to know anything. It, what it seems like is like he was just a depressed, sad kid who hadn't been in school in a year, didn't graduate, and was in his room most of the time. He'd go work with his grandfather, but they wouldn't really have any substantive conversation. They would just – he was just kind of there. Um the grandfather's a felon too, so he can't have guns. He didn't know about the guns. It's weird to me. I'm. I'd like to know how he bought the guns. Uh, I think it's you. If we're going to talk about that, then I guess it is relevant. Like, all right. So how did he get them? Did he go to a gun store? Or did he buy them from a private individual? Because they never make that distinction. Uh, mm -hmm. If he had AR-15s, like, like, did he know. get everything legally? You said once he turned eighteen. Or is that what's being said? <sighs> That's so what far? I'm reading. I'm, he got it know. legally, and it's an argument the left is using, like. Hey, if you think gun laws and restrictions aren't going to do anything, why'd this guy wait until his 18th birthday to buy his guns? And like, he got these leads legally. But I, now I don't even know what he used. I just know what he bought on his 18th birthday. Mm, they yeah, out of it. Yeah, um, and I don't, I don't know where he bought them. I, you know, like, like, like er, people always bring up gun control, but I've never heard any gun control ideas that would actually work and would be feasibly put into to practice that aren't already out there. Like, like keeping them locked if you have children should be mandatory. I think. But how do you enforce that? Are we going to go into every gun owner's home and make sure he's got his guns locked up properly? How are you going to know who all the gun owners are? We'll need to make a list. Are we going to round people up if they don't apply for the list? We gave you six months to get on the list. You're not on the list and you own a firearm. Well, now you're guilty of a crime. Are we going to do that? Because you're going to have to do that if you want to enforce that law. And a lot of people aren't going to like that. Most if you want of the to enforce it accurately, I, I would do it like auditing. Like so the only way that it'll work is your house, accurately. We've got we've got laws already that they don't really enforce. Because no, for example, there's an accident in the house with kids in it. Mm -hmm. The police come, they check to see the security of the guns. If they're not in a safe locked up, well, now you got a second problem to add to the list. And that's how they do it. Like it, people know, like man, if, if something was wrong, cop comes in here because my wife called me for being too drunk and abusive. And now I got two problems because the cop noticed my glass gun case or you know, like, yeah, I do and, like and the idea the other, of getting people's uh, self, self um, motivation involved in that. Right. Get people I looking like, after their own you, interest. You could probably get that through if you, if you did something like that, because most gun owners want their guns to be stored if they've got kids. But if you don't have kids, you don't like, if you don't have kids in your home, like the idea of locking your gun behind like two or three switches and levers is absurd. Um, it, it's insanity to you. Because the whole purpose was you needed this tool at a moment's notice to defend your life. Like, like that's mm -hmm. the scenario that, that a lot of gun owners have guns for. So, like, 
you're not going to convince them to stick it in a bunch of locks and drawers and safes and vaults and special drawers. None of that. Most of that stuff's nonsense anyway. Like those special drawers and stuff. You know, like like that Jason Bourne shit. <laughs> and you guys, are it nonsense? Or like, any, I don't trust any kind of a lock that requires a fingerprint. Like, like mm -hmm. what about I have my fucking finger and I need the gun? Like, again, we're talking about the thing that we what need if you're sweaty? to defend our lives. Like, like, there's a reason cops don't have fingerprint activated. I thought you were saying secret drawers were bullshit. And it's like, I don't know. Oh, wrong, but secret I think drawers are cool. Yeah. <laughs> have you seen uh, those right. secret drawers where the guy, like, leans on the headboard of his bed and a shotgun, and a shotgun falls rolls in his hands? <laughs> Yeah. And then you're just firing blind through the sleep in your eyes. <laughs> just <Dude. laughs> No, it's got a flashlight on it. Don't worry. Oh, yeah. good. You got the no, new I girlfriend just... over. You keep getting fucking the shotgun added to you. <laughs> no, yeah. I have five cans of bear spray hidden in every room in my house. I mean, yeah, but but uh but what I'm saying is like it like, like I don't know that there are laws that stop someone who's determined to do a thing, you know, that all they do is End up what's, uh, what's your response to the else? argument about uh, this is only happening here in the U.S., not anywhere else? Oh, it's because we've got so many guns. That's why it's happening here, because we have sure. so many guns. So you There's no that, going back. So there's no way to unring that, that bell. Oh, you just think you can't. You think there's no possible way we could do anything for this, then why try? No, no, no. I, I think that the guns are already there, and, and, and you're not going to take the salt out of the ocean or the guns out of this country. But you still got to try, right? Like we 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 agree no. that this this state of affairs try is what? Of affairs well, we can, no, 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 no. If I agree that we should back, I, I agree we citizens. should try. I agree we should try something. Yeah, sure. Yeah, that's good, try. right? If if part of the problem goes something like there's too many guns out there, Taylor. If some part of the problem goes if there's too many guns out there and there's no real way to get rid of them and only law-abiding citizens are going to turn them in. So what? Over time, these guns go somewhere. Somewhat some of these guns will be in law-abiding citizens' hands. We get rid of them. That's that's not a bad well, idea. It seems like as a net between the law-abiding citizen and the non-law-abiding citizen that if you have a buyback program the law-abiding will abide by it very quickly and but are we stopping shit not. with law-abiding citizens having weapons did any like for example here we have two police officers supposedly on hand there who are not only law-abiding citizens but state led state um mandated employees who are carrying weapons here and it still didn't stop this shit right like yeah. how do you how do you stop a random rising up from a populace of a person armed with a weapon going to attack unarmed civilians in a random location. If your police officers aren't willing to step up and do their job, then there's nothing that can prevent but you that. You just can't. You, there's, there's no way you can have the manpower to cover everything. You can't cover have, gyms, well, libraries, well, we did. We did parks. In, in this instance, we did. In this particular instance, we had the manpower there assigned to protect the place, and it failed. And, yeah, uh, but, but and, and, and to, a, to me, it's that's a bit of a straw man, right? Because sure, we, we've got it here, and maybe in this case, if perhaps we'll, it will turn out that these these officers acted poorly, it's what and happened they put to the last differently. one too. It's what, what happened was the last the, one Which one was the last one? That that awful thing in Buffalo, where where there was a security guard there too, and it just didn't matter. What and, do you and, think? Of... In that instance, he was killed, like in the line of duty. But in this instance, I, these guys fucking ran. I, I I I think we can't let that get lost on us. But the bigger problem of of like why there are mass shootings in the United States, there are mass shootings in the United States because there are mass amounts of weapons in the United States. Yeah. It's because we have so many guns. I don't think there's just something about Americans that makes no, us want to shoot. I think um, you get you get some just small percentage of people who are disturbed enough that this is the thing they think is going to do something or this is the, what they want to do. Well, you we give, give a ton of attention to it as well. Attention like, hurts like, as I well. It encourages like. the people. Yep, for sure. I should know what that looks like. Yep, yep. I, I, but I don't think know. I don't think any of this gets stopped until you have some ability to restrict people from getting these weapons. Because how can you? Like, well, what is the mechanic? You by can't. Which you have... just buy it off the black market well, if the they want is, to do something. All right, so, like, currently, but all, like, everything. I mean, I, if I want to go to the fucking gym, if I want to work out, I find it harder to go to the gym than to walk out my front door because each little bit of barrier of entry makes me less likely to carry through with do that. Do you right? apply that to the war on drugs? I apply that to, uh, probably. What, what, what is yeah. So, you think, think that theoretically true, the war on drugs could work if you just made it so impossibly difficult to get heroin and marijuana that we could succeed? I think Just, I think there's a bit of a difference here, and we can we can drill down into it if you like. But if we're sure. trying to prevent this activity for for this, and yes, these things are not going to stop all cases of it. And yes, we we are not going to get the diehard individual who plans for years to have, obtain a firearm to shoot up something. You're not going to stop that person. But these are this this is some stupid fucking kid who bought a weapon. Presumably, it sounds like legally. Whether or not he used this particular weapon, does it matter which weapon he used to shoot these people? Yeah, on? it absolutely does. It's very Why? important. It, it it matters to me how. Well, I mean, most people are killed by handguns for going by but, numbers. But because, like, the, the discussion is like, 
what can we do? What more can we do to prevent this? And it's like, well, hang on. What were we already doing? Did he get around current systems? Did he beat them? How did he do that? Like, like I, if he bought this gun uh, from a gun store, I don't know what age you have to be to buy an AR-15. I think it varies in places. I know. I think for a, a handgun, he would need to be 21. And yeah. I think he had a handgun. So, like, like uh, my understand that that. The reason, the reason I'm leaning that way is they have I haven't seen them go full blown like like he used this AR-15 like they did with the last shooting and I saw the video of the last shooting and it was gruesome and and he but without, without knowledge of that we can we can do one of two things right we can either agree to uh, to use one of them as a scenario and talk about the scenario or we can game out both scenarios right we don't know what he used right so we don't know if he got it legally or illegally and in this case in particular I think we can talk about it without knowing that right. Uh, I, I suppose so, but but I, I I think when we're talking about things that could or couldn't prevent mass shootings, like what would prevent this one? Like, like let's take it one at a time. Like what could have prevented this one in particular? I think that if there had been people who took the reports of him torturing animals and videos on the online and collecting firearms last year, if that had been taken a little bit more seriously, maybe something could have been done. When you hear about people, torturing animals, when people online. upload videos of themselves torturing animals, and that doesn't like get somebody to investigate like that's a failing of its own like if that's not something we take we're paying attention to now forget mass it's shootings tricky. let's let's just get all the animal torturers while we're at it while like, we're cleaning I don't, the streets but, but the damage I'm mixing I my cases up i don't i forget if, i think it was the previous one the buffalo one yeah where this guy had been reported he had been investigated they looked mm -hmm. into him and they didn't like keep him locked up forever now in hindsight it seems obvious that they should have right they should have but in reality, how do you determine the people who are going to shoot up a place, a grocery store or a school, and the people you just think might? You can't prosecute. You can't lock up everyone who you think might. I, I mean, I it agree. seems like the FBI is fucking bad at figuring this out because really, you what the, the the Pulse nightclub shooter? They came out after that one, if I recall, and we're like, oh yeah, this guy, he's been on our radar for a while. Oh no, yeah. we didn't do but, anything. But we, the, just, we just knew that he was posting violent things and that he lock was violent towards just, his wife and that he did all this words, other shit. You lock up people. But this shit who, is like, a percentage game, right? This is the same thing that happens when we have a failing of national intelligence and some big thing goes down, right? How many are they stopping? What percentage are they not? And what happens if you reduce the base number? The percent that go through may or may not be as high or low as we'd like, but you start rep you start restricting people's ability to do this less that these things go through if you know if you have some you know you could go all right this kid's killing animals or whatever or has been reported and he got checked out and who knows if that failed or not the kid alone in his fucking room with a knife doesn't kill 21 people you know like the kid with a nuclear weapon kills a lot more than 21 people so well, what, what is we, your, what, well, what, what is I'm your prescription getting him assessed with like, like how i'm wondering how, what your your goal yeah, what's your prescription what's the fix how do, how do we take the gun away from the kid well <laughs> You'd like me to solve gun control? I'll, I'll answer that to well, a point no, of this. But, no, I'll, 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 I'll respond to your point. But like, I don't think this. I don't think the idea of just ignoring it. Like, you're you're saying, okay, this is there's a lot oh, of guns out there. I agree it. with that. I'm telling right? you, there's a lot of guns work. out there. It will be hard to get. It will be hard to get rid of all those guns. It's impossible it to get rid of them. Sure, I, I may even. I even for the sake of this argument, I will buy. For the sake of this conversation, I'll buy that that starting point. It's impossible to get rid of all of them. It doesn't. Right. That doesn't reduce the benefit of making a reduction in these weapons. I'll give right? you another point. number out like, there. Like, like on top of the fact that it's impossible to um, shrink the, the number of firearms in the country, it's impossible to slow the growth of the number of firearms in the country. There are more guns today than there were yesterday, and that has been true forever. That There's never been a time where it's like, hey, we don't have as many guns today in the United much States as we did fix. yesterday. That if is if not. It that is impossible is. to fix. It's politically harder, but it's a just much easier make it fix. Illegal. Yeah. Make what illegal? Guns. Because the, uh, <laughs> they don't want a civil war? That'll be a civil war. Yeah, yeah right. that would be yeah, the that would be very, it, it, would sure. If you, if you want to yeah. go over there to, to the, the whole Bill of Rights and start taking chunks out, now you're going to have a civil war. If, when you're going to go into Alabama with your like federal peacekeeping force and, uh, and go home to home, and they come out. Yeah. We know you've got a shotgun. And grandma comes out and they gun grandma down. And that, that's all over the interweb. And the people in Louisiana say they're not going to kill my grandma. And there's not just one grandma getting gunned down on one doorstep. There are hundreds of them all over the country. And it's not just in the South. There's plenty of people up in Vermont that what, what's their what, what are they the live free or die? Uh, yeah, state? live free or die, New Hampshire. Yeah, <laughs> their grannies are getting gunned down on the anti-taxation message. All of a sudden, anyway. all of a sudden, we realize maybe we should have left all those armed citizens who were just following the Bill of Rights alone. 
There will be a civil fucking war with grannies dead and and politicians getting What are we okay with? What do we want? Do we want to go, okay, we're going to ignore this and allow this problem to continue as it is? Are we okay with this number of children dying? I, I don't have any kids. I've got no vested interest in this. I'm against, obviously, people's kids being killed for this, but I'm, I don't have a, I'm not sitting here going like I have a strong stance on guns, but it seems pretty simple on guns, rather. But it seems pretty, pretty obvious to me that if a percentage of people are going to do these attacks and the bigger and more powerful the weapon they have, the more damage they're going to do, then limiting the access to weapons they have is going to limit the damage they can do. Now you say, okay, well, we can't get rid of guns. We can certainly restrict that. And the analogy I was trying to make is for in something as simple as, that, as something as interested as I am in fitness, the likelihood of me going to work out reduces when I have the simple step of going to the fucking gym as opposed to walking out my door and getting on a bike or running, right? If that simple step is something as effective enough for me that it reduces my workout by a percentage, making them jump some extra hoops <clears throat> to get their weapons is going to reduce that by a percentage you know, too. Is it going to fix that- it? No. Is it going to be the only cure? No, but it's going to reduce that by some degree. I think that you would see very little reduction in the outliers, who, which is what we're talking Mass about. Shootings have gone up. Those in the last people, 30 what years those people would hang on. What, what, what those people would hear is yeah, you can't treat. have this, and there a lot of those like weird personalities are going to hear. Well, I didn't want one until you told me I couldn't have one. Maybe I will shoot up your authoritarian ass. I don't think you can. You're not going to stop the fanatics, Kyle. I, I agree 100%. And with when that you start trying to ban a particular kind of weapon, you'll find that you've just jumped in to it, it'd be like if like a politician tried to jump into one of our favorite video games to balance it, not knowing anything about <laughs> video games. That's, that, like it would be like if if, if one of if, if Mitch McConnell wanted to come over to Civilization 5 and, and the Lek mod and be oh, like, I love start, the culture we and that's what we're going to do. And start Nothing balancing about. out all of the cultures. And he's doing it from from his limited knowledge of of that world and its rules and all the multifaceted I'll, things. I'll take yeah. I'll take an L on that and say that I don't know a lot about this culture. It's or, so or, hard. I, I couldn't I do it. But, but I, I was going to say that's the other part I was going to go with this. But none of us are experts in gun law and the implications of each of these different policies. We're all not an expert in anything, here. bro. So exactly. Well, <laughs> it may or not be true, but we're all we're all with you know we're all talking out of our asses here for this. So I guess oh, kind of engage with that core concept for me a little bit. And Kyle, why do you think the reduction in the power of what these people have accessible to define them that would not um, because you have to define that now, sure. and a politician would be the one to define it. Well, but this is. This is this is like almost changing the scope of the conversation. Are we talking the idea? Or are we talking the specific input of what that what that is line by line of that? So I can't. Okay, okay. If you had a magic wand, okay. If you had a magic wand that sure. could make guns less powerful, then obviously now less damage will be done by guns. Maybe, maybe we'll have to okay. go bombs then. But but what I'm saying is that like it's not a feasible thing to do. All right, here the the guy in. Uh, uh, New York that that shot all those black people. He had one of those AR-15s who had been heavily modified to meet state compliance in New York. Mm. It, he called it a cucked AR-15. <laughs> it was, and, it, and it was. But you can easily modify that if you have a brain into one that's not so. And and but you can having even go a up- brain is a limiting factor. Right, like right there, you've just reduced the pool of people who can do that. <laughs> Filthy's made a point that like every hoop you have to jump through makes this some amount better. Will it be hard to measure? Impossible, yeah, perhaps, but it's just true. You know, I, I never tried marijuana until I went to Colorado. You know, I just didn't want to. Like, I don't know how to find an illegal drug dealer in North Carolina. You know, did, and you weren't motivated to do it either. You it probably it, it is. It is inherently yeah. true. Like the more barriers you have up, that's why I was curious about the drug question because like a lot of the people who present this in the context of guns will be like, oh, the drug, you know, the black market solved nothing. There's no way to solve drugs. They have to be legal. So yeah, what, I like your consistency on that, filthy. What What I don't like to do is is have like hypotheticals about like, not I mean fine to have for a conversation, but 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 if yeah. we're getting to the core of the argument, it's like. Nobody wants children to get shot. That was fucking awful. It's yeah. it's yeah, really yeah. been bugging. It was literally me. just like that it. one guy. Everyone else doesn't but, like what that one guy did. Yeah, I, I I wonder if he what he thought while he was doing it. Like how fucked was he that he could even do something like that? Uh, you but know, but there's a but, small hole in that argument, right? Which goes, we all might agree that we don't want the outcome. But if some people are not willing to take steps to reduce that outcome, then what is it? What do you, what do you actually take from that? Well, you go, you go yes, they don't want that, but there's a bigger thing that they do want. So, and, and again, like yeah. I don't, I don't have a vested interest in this this argument personally, like one way or the other on gun rights. Yeah. I don't own a gun, but I don't particularly care one way or the other on that. But I, I think 
I think Memorial Day sale they're, they're cheap right now. <laughs> <laughs> I thought about it a couple of years ago. I almost, almost did end up with one. But let me let me know. I got some tips. <laughs> yeah, we had that conversation. But again, the point the point it's being exploding that exploding ammo. If we do nothing about this, and or rather allow this state to affairs to happen as it is, then we're basically saying, okay, we're we're accepting this degree, or and perhaps even a rising degree, as you said, more guns are being pumped out than ever before, a rising degree of these types of shootings, and it's currently not only restricted to shootings, these weren't the school shootings, these get a lot of uh, media attention for this, but any of these places could potentially happen. We've seen the nightclub shootings. There's nothing that prevents us being a park or a library or any other gathering of people. We had the concert shooting, right? Like these things are gonna happen while there's people who are not, people with these ideas and personalities and problems who have access to these weapons. And that that mm. seems the inevitable outcome of making them so readily available. So I would, yeah. uh... My my solution, honestly, like, like like look, if I had a child in an elementary school, my solution needs to save my child. I don't want to start lobbying for dollars and putting an infrastructure together and start looking at Supreme Court justices because that's what what when anybody who wants to yank guns away, that's their plan. Their plan is 30, 40, 50 years from now, maybe we can chip away. If that's your goal to like legislate against guns, good luck. Good luck. Okay, you might as well legislate against oil. Get right on that one too. It's not going to fucking win. You're not going to win. It's it's you seen not the work. the Ford hybrid uh, hybrid vehicle ads. No, right I haven't actually. Services. No. Yeah. Before before we jump to the Ford ads, ads. We, we've got to hear from. Uh... Doesn't hire him. <laughs> God, I, hope I have a know. new topic. The memes alone, it's worth it. Okay. <laughs> oh, I don't know yeah. if it'll, it'll land or not. I, because we have filthy. Filthy, if you could look at that, that is China's... Um, Am I going to regret clicking this link? No, it's fine. Okay. China's social credit system explained in an infographic. Oh, really? And I haven't seen this. It shows the kinds of things that um, would like get you social credit points and the kinds of things that would cost you social credit points. So some of the get stuff is, is pretty cool. Like engaging in charity work gets you points taking care of elderly family members, positively influence the neighborhood, donating blood. Heroic act. Praising the government on social media gets you points. <laughs> Helping the poor, having good financial credit history, and committing a heroic act, as Kyle mentioned. Now, some of the things that lower your score. Cheating in online games. Okay. Participating in anything to be deemed a cult. Insincere apologies for crimes committed. <laughs> scary. Spreading rumors on the internet. Posting anti-government messages on social media. Uh, I not bet that's visiting, a lot of the rumors. Not visiting aging parents. Illegally protesting against authorities. Traffic offenses. So, I'm sorry. Are these are these rank ordered? Or can rather, I just not say? That I can, can I just say I that I am on board with this system like ninety two percent. This sounds like some. I really like the visiting the elderly. We don't do enough of that. Cheating on okay. online games. I love the cheating of the online games, mm -hmm. and they need it over there. Those fucking cheaters. It's another word. And, and, and. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ! <laughs> I think another word sounds so much. And 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 giving blood. I like that too. They won't take mine because I got like syphilis yeah. antibodies or something. I don't know mm, what they said. Really? Because uh, I bet your blood is fucking awesome. If I took your blood, I'd get jacked. If you took my blood, you get acne. <laughs> <laughs> Your fucking voice would get deeper. <laughs> I like the uh, I like the stuff like visiting the elderly. You're right, that's good. But then like spreading rumors online or saying anything about the Chinese government, it's like. I was hoping to hear you know the how end of wide and it like it, it's funny how they structure that, I mean, it like yeah. all of these things so you do. Just where it's like, oh, if you, if you donate Chinese blood. Country? A very specific thing, donating blood, you can get points. Oh, if you say something we don't like online, yeah. And then if you insincerely apologize about it, yeah. Or if you spread something we deem to be a rumor after the fact, yeah. And so it's like, yep. oh, so there's a million billion ways to get lowered down and only a couple of small ways to go up. What, are you going to visit elderly people every day? You're going to give <laughs> blood every day? It is like, true. It does seem to start with a knock you down system. Yeah. No, this I is a pay to play. No, we know this how this is shit very works. Easy. Look, look, all you got to do is... Jack Ma doesn't play by that rule. Just don't be an asshole, right? Like, like they're saying people are spreading rumors about the government online. I don't like that either. All right? I don't want to play <laughs> out there spreading rumors about my government. Get out of here, busybody. Where are you from? Aren't the important no, bits I want the nothing but rumors. Aren't the I, important bits the, what, what they do with this? 
what well, it we're, we're going to chip away at your score. Or not. Yeah, they you know, put you in we jail. Chip, we chip away at your score enough. You won't be able to uh, find gainful employment. But I mean, employers should definitely look at your score to see what kind of person you are. I would love it if there were a cool guy score that everybody mm. had been accruing since the time. What would I were. do to raise my points? All right, cool yeah. guy score. Um, <laughs> you had uh, post I, I think, uh, woke so, memes on Twitter. Traffic violations. Like, bag one hundredth girl. So so let's say let's say like, <laughs> traffic, cool guy. traffic violations are a mixed bag. Speeding, cool guy points. <laughs> <laughs> Running a red light, you lose cool guy points. See, mm. you see how that works. All Doing right? a donut in a parking lot, cool guy points. It under depends. eighteen, cool guy. Were points. there girls older there? than eighteen? Only if there were girls Demerits. there. There were girls there, but they were underage. How's that factor in? That's extra. Complicates cool. it. <laughs> those, are, those are the only girls who think donuts are cool. <laughs> what, are, what are you out of your mind? What are you going to do yeah. donuts for a bunch of 30 year olds? That's why I do donuts in front of KB. I call the cops. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. I would like some sort of, because uh, right now we got this like credit system that doesn't even take so much into uh, account, right? Like, like, they don't care that I'm paying my cell phone bill, apparently on time yeah. like, they don't care that like i pay my garbage man on time but right. they do care if i like have some silly credit card that they they'll just i don't know when they'll stop sending them if i if i kept saying yes lately and they do that for everyone i i, mm -hmm. I feel like i don't know I, we need a real credit system these chinese are on to something hmm. well they are winning like I, I i don't believe they were battle. everyone's beating us anymore I need to. We need to have a war to be sure because we yeah. thought Russia was pretty badass, and it turns out they're not as good as a bunch of. Dude, farmers. Russia has been shining our wheels all month. This has been look. It's not going great over here, right? The mass shootings, the economy's looking rough, <laughs> and fucking inflation is. Yeah, terrible. but look at how high our inflation I, numbers regard, are. Regardless of <laughs> whether you're liberal or conservative or whatever the fuck, we all know our president is kind of like pitiful. Half in but, the like, bag. The last yeah. one was embarrassing. So is this one, but for a very different way. This is like grandpa needs to be like his wife is there so much, and I think she's there for a safety system. I'm not even laughing at him anymore. I feel bad. Like he's a diminished man. It, it, it feels bad. But <laughs> we're not Russia. <laughs> Jesus <laughs> Christ. They can't do anything right. It's it's did, it's hilarious. did you ever like in your head put Russia on like equal tier with China? Maybe I did thought about it differently. Well, I always had like China as a much like higher tier, like well, a long time ago. Like yeah, in the 80s and say, 90s, they were the yeah. second, right? Ch China's and, a rising star. Russia feels like it's a falling. Perfect, perfect. The thing is, they did have us believe that Russia might be second or third in best armies in the world. Remember the premise of like, I don't remember which Call of Duty it was. But the premise was that Russia had swept across Europe, like mm -hmm. all the way to France. And they had also paratrooped into like the west coast of the United States. And it was a fight for LA or some shit. You were like in small town America with a 50 cal. Like, like it was like <laughs> Wolverines. I don't mean to be, to be anti French, but I do think that Russia would have an easier time in France oh, than Ukraine. The French would hold them back with their lives. They can't, they can't take it. You think so? Like last time. Um, yeah, I, didn't I, the Nazis I, conquer France in like four hours? I watched. Uh, <laughs> I shot her every time with the retelling. Huh? I, <laughs> uh, <laughs> I think I literally it was like two days or something, right? <laughs> I, I watched a documentary about that, and they explained. It was why. like they went at skipping why? speed to Paris and then <laughs> conquered it, and then that was it. Ah, <laughs> oh, this is fucking easy, Hans. Why is so much fun? Not just surrendering once a in. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> I just want to point out that Teller's now been holding that thing for two and a half hours. <laughs> that's not, that that's nothing for him. Yeah, that's amazing. His left hand best. can't do shit, but his right hand's going for three, four hours before. Yeah. No, I, I watched a documentary <laughs> that explained why France um, like capitulated so quickly, and it, it I can't remember the finer details of of the war lines or whatever and how everything progressed. But I came away from it being like, oh, they were kind of had a raw deal. That's that that wasn't really fair then, I guess. And, you know, what it is war or whatever, but it seemed like they mm -hmm. weren't prepared properly for what happened. Well, I can't I remember the, the finer details the, at all. The, the Germans basically like debuted that strategy of Blitzkrieg, Blitzkrieg. lightning war, and no one had ever fought like that in the modern era. And so France <laughs> didn't anticipate them being able to cover the amount of ground they did, and so it was like they were caught flat footed at every single encounter. Yeah, I, although at some level, was. 
at some yeah. level you do have to wonder like no one had thought strategically of the strategy of taking things quickly like i understand it's not exactly that and i, I don't want to it just sounds like that's probably been thought of once or twice before what if we attack them really quickly no that would never work you know like, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> It, it, a lot of technologies had had like convened as well to make it possible with with the uh, more reliable engines. Period, because because you know World War yeah. One like there's a I'm lot sure, of I'm sure I'm sure stuff. it was like you know like counter to like the current idea of like digging like fucking trenches and like holding this bit by bit. I'm sure yeah I'm sure it's, but it's, it's still promoted, hilarious it, level that. when you think of Blitzkrieg. I always thought of just like all right everybody go that way. But then I watched like. Um, it was actually from the 40s, and it was one of those like silly black and white animations for the U.S. Army explaining it, and the, and it was more like a spear penetrating through the line, yep. and the line could eventually was pierced, and then like the, everything behind it forming this channel that mm -hmm. that now the line was completely pierced, and you had enemies to your left and right, but the front kept piercing more, and the and the back mm -hmm. is like filling in the gaps like continually. There was a very organized. Um, maneuvering uh, thing that was going on via radio and and highly highly yeah. trained, cracked out uh, troops because they were all on uh, amphetamines. Wasn't the Maginot Line a big part of it? I thought this was the deal that France had this wall that they invest a lot of time and energy into to protect themselves from the Germans, and the Germans just went around the wall. And now it's like a famous analogy for people who do that everywhere. You know, you've got the most secure dur in the world with two windows next to it. Like, yeah. That's the yeah. Line. <laughs> yeah. I remember yeah, something and, about that as well. The World War II is fascinating. It's one of my it, it, it's it's the coolest it thing that's ever happened, I think, in human history. The uh, Russian tactics versus like the Blitzkrieg tactics. Like the Russians literally were just like, just keep just keep going. Like just, don't just you keep love that? going. Do you remember when Where we played do we company go, of comrade? Just go, dude. Just go <laughs> forward, and it's like was I'm the, um, hungry, and I don't have shoes on. <laughs> Can I go this way? Point this way, then go forward. What yeah. was the uh, the game that we played, Taylor? With the, like the World War Two, it was um an RTS oh, Medal like, of Honor or something. Company Not of Middle Heroes or something. Company of Heroes, something like that. It was the yeah, top. Yeah, yeah. Like, yeah Company like, of Heroes I, too. That's what we played. It was so fun to play as the Russians because they had like a penal squad or something, like maybe a penal grenadier squad. Yeah. So like eight guys just running in like brown uniforms and they all you could you could make them all throw their grenades at once and decimate some fucking wehrmacht like like high level german nonsense over there it was, it was funny how fun that game, game played out too because like if you played as the russians it was like your tanks are cheap as shit your conscripts have horrible aim but they're cheap as shit but you just keep pumping them out and if you played as the the germans it was like you got to save up and get that tiger or that panther tank and then you protect that panther tank because it's going to destroy every other tank that comes in range, but you can't let it take hits, you know, and you got your little like elite Germans. And then the Americans were kind of like the, the middle ground faction, if I recall, where it's like yeah. the tanks weren't as good as the Germans, but their infantry weren't as bad as the Russians. What a fun game. That was a good game. That was a really good game. I like to do those um, <clears throat> just like bottleneck defense strategies where we just have tons of emplaced guns and stuff, Bofors guns and stuff. That's a really fun game. I wonder if there's a, uh, a new version of that. That was fun. Yeah, we would just play and be like, all right, we're doing another custom map. This time, let's put 12 enemies on the other side. You take the left bridge, I take the right. And then like three hours later, we'd be like, I don't think they're going to make it through. Yeah, the yeah, entire, yeah. Like, <laughs> the, the, great. the debris stays there. And so like, there's just an entire bridge clogged with Russian or Nazi tanks or whatever. So they like, yeah, we would make like 12 around. armies try to come down a long bridge, like a suspension <laughs> bridge. And we're on the other end with like sandbags and cannons. <laughs> no, that was and they didn't get the memo that you can play <laughs> defensive. <laughs> no, no. no, that's a really yeah, fun that was a great game. game. I'm 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 so I'm looking to call it back to reality for a half second. Did you guys yes. catch any of the reports of um, the Russian soldiers who didn't really know what the actual political reality situation was from that? I, th I think Kyle told me a, a bit about. Oh, it. I've heard everything from guys who thought they were on a training exercise and didn't know what part of the world they were in to um, guys um, getting uh, executed by their superiors that were wounded to to people like you know being what? handed. Uh, being handed their papers that say you're not in the army and you haven't been in the army for a month and a half. And these are soldiers in Ukraine with Russian uniforms. And they're like, here are your papers. Um, you're not in the army, nor have you been for the last month and a half. You should probably get out of here. <laughs> like, like all sorts of nonsense to try to like. What, why? 
different reasons. And, and uh, in that instance, they were just like, they didn't want to be responsible for those troops anymore. Those oh. were just untrained. Like they were in a barn on the wrong part of Ukraine, like cold. That's they, they were like, we're cold. <laughs> like, yeah, like, 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 like I'm hungry. <laughs> like, 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 like they don't have any sort of, but it's way to, support to their, their advantage to, just, to say, I don't know why I'm here. I thought it was a training. You know, I'm being tried for war crimes now, right? They're, they're saying you came here and you murdered Ukrainians. This is a trial in Ukraine by Ukraines for Ukraines. And it's to my advantage to say, man, I thought I was here in a training exercise. But that's not what happened. The, they all say training exercise. And the one that was put on trial said, um, I, I was I, I either had to like shoot that man or they were gonna kill me. You know, he didn't mention any training exercise. He just told the truth. It, it, personally, they shouldn't put that guy on trial. That that seems insane to like put that guy on trial. He had no choice. Like it wasn't even like he was ordered by the radio, like you've seen a movie like they're, they're right. like, do it. He can't be like, you're breaking up. Like the <laughs> yeah. good guy, like 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 what it you can't do that because there's literally a guy there who's saying destroy that vehicle. And and he's like, "What? You, that's an order. You destroy the vehicle. You're you're a tank gunner, I guess, in the fucking army and your commander or whatever he is tells you to destroy a vehicle. Are you supposed to have big ideas about which <laughs> vehicles you or and like when and where? No, you're supposed to be a machine that clicks that button mm -hmm. when he tells you to." That's right. what you've been training yeah, you to that, do. I thought they put a stop to that at the end of World War II. Wasn't this like all the Nuremberg stuff? And then they gave you, isn't this true of our current military as well, that you were supposed to be only only following lawful orders and part of your job as a soldier is to understand what constitutes a lawful order and what isn't? So isn't that exactly the opposite of what you just said? I mean, militaries do not if care about international law. That's not something that's been enforced in a little while, because but if that's the case, because they just found this guy guilty of it and they gave him a life. It seems right? super weird too, like this the the level to which Russia was willing to stoop to in Ukraine. It seems just so strange to me. Like already the disproportion like I get it, the war didn't go well. They lost it essentially. But it's it seems like if you were gonna do that, would you really want to add war crimes on top of that? Were they really just banking on the fact that this was just never going to be something that the international community was willing to do anything about because it's Russia and you don't want to fuck with Russia and their nukes kind of deal. Is this really? I mean, that, that could be. I mean, you, you generally nukes are kind of like you get out of jail free card for shit. Like as far as what Russia and China and the U S do, like we got nukes. Oh yeah. Right. Oh, I guess Honduras can't hold us accountable. Oops. <laughs> like, so I, I totally get that. What is, what, what is like kind of the end game of this? Like did, did Russia steal the, um, Donetsk or Luhansk, like that region, or did Ukraine take that back? Like, what's going to be the the kind of redrawing of the map if there will be after this? The Ukrainians are saying that they will not stand for any redrawing of the map; that the war will go on, and the Ukrainians they want back. and the Ukrainians can fight forever, and the Russians can't. That's the state of things. This is just like a civ game. Well, the Ukrainians where, can't fight forever. Where, There's still a people that needs to get back to their lives. Nope, they can fight forever. This is a civ <laughs> game. We, we are at war. Uh, we, we're being invaded. But the problem is, like, the team members all to the to the east of me are feeding me resources and manpower, and I can hold this line forever. You will have to. They they, they will hold it forever. The Russians cannot win. They can't. Uh, certainly not. The, they're doing this trickle in thing anyway. They would need to stop, pull back, and mass forces for, and, and try to come next spring. If, then, then, then maybe if they put you, a, you think they put that a they'll just continue men together, like, like you have like, to remember, like Ukraine is a country, like they need to get back to why? having I think people have they jobs don't because they have friends. Why? We're paying the bills. but those friends will not last forever. The, no, Ukraine yeah, also was like big talking no. to Russia for years because they were convinced that we were going to let them in NATO, and then the you, U.S. said no dice. The, it'll stay forever. It'll we'll never stop paying this because this is a win for us. For every dollar we send over there. It costs Russia two, and that's not the exact ratio, but it might be. Yeah, but do we that. want to fight a, an infinite proxy war against yes, Russia that's using, our, that's using Ukrainian citizens? So we're just going to use Ukrainian lives to fight a war against Russia. This is and the just best feed, case like, scenario that's, for. No, I this, don't like this. That. Is Uncle Sam's? Win. You don't like it, but you just get one vote. You're not Lockheed Martin. Yeah, you, you get your that's one vote. That's true. Uncle I just Sam, like Uncle Sam is winning so fucking hard 
right now, and, and, and nobody seems to even be talking about it. Uh, like, like Russia who cares? Think about the shit actual on. Ukrainian people. On the and, and then, and then, like Biden has the audacity. Somebody propped him up to like let China know that, like, just so you know, like we're ready to go to war over Taiwan. <laughs> like, like, like that was an interesting pronouncement, wasn't it? Yeah, Uncle Sam's got some fucking balls. Okay, uh, somebody propped Biden up real nice the other day to say that shit to China. And and no, this thing in Russia, we want this to go on as long as possible. If this is happening five years from now, the world is a safer place for it. But that's not good for Ukrainian citizens and the people there. To oh, basically, where are you from, Taylor? What part of Ukraine <laughs> do you hail from? You know how <laughs> I am. No, I don't like us getting yeah. involved in this shit. Taylor, you're absolutely right. <laughs> Like but you don't want to use citizens point, right? of a foreign country in a proxy. We're not war using them. We're country. helping them. They can decide if they want to stop. They don't want to stop because Slavic Re really, or they'll decide. So there's yeah. no influence of the U.S. egging on, you know, proxy warfare if, between if, the nations. If Volodymyr uh, wants to to um, strike up a a deal with Russia and agree to like some new battle lines, he's free to do that. He can't join NATO. And don't think of him as some pawn of the West because he's not standing for that either. Like he's doing his own thing and he's happy to keep doing it because he wants all of his country back now. And I, you, you can't under imagine the amount of resources that they're being pumped in there. I, I like understand. we are sending, was it 40 more? Work out? I can't keep up. Okay, perfect example. I'm glad you brought that up. Because, yeah, a huge but, amount of dead Vietnamese who were used as pawns in a proxy war. That's who what I'm cares saying. about the Vietnamese? It's about Russia and the U.S. And the Soviet Union won Vietnam because of how many – they made us look terrible on the national – this is a perfect uh, – this is perfect. They embarrassed us on the national – on the global stage. America's beatable. Did you guys know? What are you talking about? America's never lost a war except maybe the Civil War? No. They just lost one. Look, we did it over here in the jungle with rice paddy farmers. You can't lose a Civil War. You, you win in the end, right? Like, look, regardless, it depends it's which <laughs> side you were on, Taylor. It's ambivalent. <laughs> no, I mean, I understand no, what you're saying, Kyle, and it depends on the perspective you're taking. Win like, for if your Soviets. perspective is more like we and, need and, to be distanced it's also from about these countries. And it's, it's about culture and technology as well, or technocracy maybe is the correct word, because right now we're showing that American tech fucking shits on Soviet uh, Russian tech. It shits on it in every way that matters. I'm we're sure. showing. We're showing that our like the, the special forces teams that are being given night vision, they're more effective. The drones that are being fed into the money that we're able to pump into it and not even care. Well, frankly, we're going through a terrible economic crisis, but we're still able to fund a huge proxy war that's just shitting all. Yeah, we over just got to borrow some money from China. And I heard they were sending. I heard they were sending uh, like like T sixty two tanks. I think those are the ones from. The game that we were just talking about. Yeah, and those weren't even the good ones. <laughs> <laughs> those weren't even the good ones in that game. But no, I and I, I think Filthy understands what I'm saying. Like, you, it depends on the angle you're taking. If you're just talking about superiority of the U.S. and their ability to inflict influence everywhere on Earth, I understand what you're saying. If like the narrative is to be believed, though, that oh, we really do care on behalf of the Ukrainian people and the people in these countries that are caught in the middle of this shit, then it would stand to reason that you'd go, yeah, you know what is not good for the average Ukrainian is continuing a proxy war with fucking Russia and putting them in harm's way. What's your solution? So we, should we should we should we have them be less armed so that the Russians can more quickly conquer their country? Is that what you want to do? I don't I don't know what the right move is, but I know that it's not getting involved in yet another proxy war in Korea or Vietnam or that is what Kyle what suggested, not giving them the like, you're like, I don't know what the answer is, but I know that it is that not giving them stuff and letting the Russians quickly topple them. I don't think the Russians would quickly topple them. The Russians seem pretty inept in this shit. And no, no, if, no, no, I mean, no, no, if they, no, if no, they no, want no. to keep fighting. We are making them. We are doing this. This look. There may be Ukrainians on the ground, but we are the intelligence and the coordination. We are spending. It's not. A, it's not just the billions that we're spending because we are. We're sending cash, money, as well as shipments of everything imaginable to fight a war. Mm -hmm. It's the infrastructure that is a trillion dollars that that generations of Americans have been putting together. That is our intelligence network our spy satellites, and the planes that we don't even know about that fly at speeds that we can't imagine and are invisible maybe even to the fucking eye at this point. Because <laughs> when's the last time we saw like cutting-edge tech? The F-35, right? They built that shit in the 90s. Yes. Like, so the cutting-edge tech you can't see. This makes perfect sense. 
What I'm saying is that a lot of money is being used <laughs> to coordinate the war effort in Ukraine. I don't think it's a coincidence that the Russians suddenly don't know how to fight wars, but the Ukrainians are great at it. Yeah, I, 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 right next to each I other. understand where you're coming from, and I don't know what the right answer is. You know what I but think? I, it, it, does, like, it is bad for Ukrainians to have an active war going on for the next five years. And if it's you're saying cool. it would benefit the U.S. to have this going on for the next five, six years, I believe you because it would, by comparison, weaker, weaken Russia having a hostile state on their border much more than it would us. It'd be much easier for us to fuel that and antagonize and, and, and really put the, the screws to Russia. Good but is that is that good that for Ukrainian people? No, of What's course it's not good be? for you. No, of course it's not good it, for you. Yeah, it's not, good it's for not, it's not about what's good. It's not of course about what's, not. Good. Right. Not about what's exactly. good for them. It's about what's better for them because we don't have like... Yeah. Uh, the choice between peace and 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 war that's not well, the decision to end the, it, it, it's, you can so, always try and, and find you say a that, right you what you're what i mean i mean it feels it feels like you're both arguing the same problem here right Taylor, taylor's over there saying this is no good for them kyle just responded with it'd be better it's better for them than the alternative of being conquered but there's a third alternative which is the war gets stopped sooner right yes but mm -hmm. that's not better for the other people invested in that by what you terms know? So, by what terms? Because if if Ukraine has to cede control of all of their um, access to the, to the sea there and all of their oil fields, then they they go from the fourteenth largest producer of natural gas on the planet to a third world fucking country with their biggest enemy who ju who just invaded them twice in a row in the course of <laughs> what six seven years. They now have to trust that. Okay, this think about a civ game. How this would work when someone offers you peace? What they really mean? They mean give me a minute. No, I'd be trying to win they with mean, dancing and culture. They mean give me a minute <laughs> because I need my, my shit's on fire right now. Give me a minute. Oh, you Loot want my peace? way to victory? Oh yeah, dance in the streets. We'll be back in four years. Like, like no, they need to fight this war until it's ended properly, until maybe until Vladimir Putin is gone because that's that's an outcome that is not inconceivable. I, I but some it, some other guy will just step in and fill the vacuum. Not a crate. This is a different kind of guy. No one. They haven't done this in a while. They haven't invaded another country in a while like this. This is a little different. I thought you said they did seven years ago. Same guy. He's it's the same guy. country. The same guy. <laughs> <laughs> I, I I'm, just, I'm saying like I misunderstood Boris, what you're saying. I don't think Boris Yeltsin would, would be like you know in, invading countries and blowing up. Well, let's dig them up. <laughs> <laughs> like Zoom board Finally, stuff. we're coming up with answers and not just problems. Now we're coming up with solutions. <laughs> but but in the end, like, like like I I do think that the war going on is what's best for Ukraine. I think that that their position can only improve and that Russia's uh, position can only um, get worse. It's not like anybody's funding the Russians the way that the rest of the fucking world is funding mm -hmm. Ukraine and the rest and and a huge portion of the world's economy is choking Russia. They're going to be forced into a situation that is can only be more advantageous to Ukraine. And don't imagine that the Ukrainians are being slaughtered by the millions or anything. They're fighting a very effective war from what all, all the reports on the internet are. Like, I mean, their lives like, have, so many millions of people's lives have been absolutely uprooted, destroyed. Like they can't return to their homes. So their let's make Russia pay for like, like, like in the past when a war like this would happen, like, like the, 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 the loser would have to pay. Like, like maybe we, yeah. we pull it to Donald Trump. Maybe that's his thing. Maybe he comes but, but, in. He's, he's like, we're going to build Ukraine and Russia's going to pay for it. <laughs> oh, I mean, we that, just want that would Donald. Be, we just would want be, Donald. That would be very funny. I would like that if he did uh, But come on. Everyone would be like, you lied the first time. No, no, no. What have you done? No, no, no. I, got, I got even better. We're going to rebuild Ukraine. And Mexico is going to pay for it. <laughs> <laughs> now I'm on board. <laughs> and, and, and I would like it if he actually made Mexico pay for it, though. Eh, you couldn't get Mexico to pay for the wall. So we need to invade Mexico. As soon as they refuse to pay for that wall, we need to explain to them that current boundaries did not allow for an effective and safe barrier between our two countries. And so we have to invade <laughs> on the basis that we need a small American lives are in danger. Wall. Uh, yeah, we, because they won't control the, 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 the immigration issue. We have to do it for the betterment of our citizens to keep, to keep them safe. And there's no way to do it correctly with the current borders. So we would have to invade. We'd have to take some territory. And that is where the wall would be placed. And it wouldn't be just a wall against uh, um, illegal Mexicans. It would be a wall against all Mexicans. You That'd be more I, fair. I, I'm over the whole And they would thing. pay for it if they wanted to use it, if they wanted I, to come over here. Okay. I would, I would like a moat. At all. Oh, there would be a moat. A moat mm. with crocodiles. All sorts, just syringes. You know Donald Trump asked for that, right? <laughs> like, like, all jokes aside, you know Donald Trump asked about that, right? 
Yep. Like, like, That's like hilarious. Aldrich, he, he wanted alligators a, in the in the. Zach, Zach, fact check me because like that's either a, either a fever dream I had or no, that's I remember a something about that fact. too. Like I, I the thing is, like so many of these Trump things, I'm like, well, like um, I think it's scores so well stupid. though. How, I think it scores well. Well, Woody, <laughs> what you have to remember is that any sort of barrier to entry is going to ultimately decrease the number of people. That's that do this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's absolutely I'll tell you what, it's a moat it or a just a. It costs Imagine a brain that barrier to entry and might be too high in the case of crocodiles, but it would. It would reduce the. Now we've, we've got an idea to stop the illegals. We're calling it the Hornet Mile. <laughs> it is a mile of southern Texas where we've destroyed everything. Nothing but hornets. Nothing but wasps. Good Murder luck, hornets. Mexicans. Finally, they make their plot return. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, it turns out they killed all the bees. No one could have seen that coming. I'm so sorry. <laughs> we've allowed the killer bees into the country specifically for this moment. They're going to be yeah. relocated to the border. Uh, Africa wall, is not sending their best killer bees. bees. Africa is sending killer bees. They're saying <laughs> that'd be so funny. That, uh, They're like Trump racistly calls African bees killer bees, and it's like, well, <laughs> but they are killer bees. <laughs> I remember the graphic. Oh. I, what uh, would happen if you tried to put alligators in the Rio Grande? They probably would they, live? Would they, they die? probably ruin the ecosystem somehow. <laughs> yeah, that, right, somehow, but you don't know for sure until you try. Yeah. What about some kind of aquatic wolf? <laughs> Ooh, a sea wolf or a sea bear, <laughs> perhaps. Perhaps some sort of a hybrid between a wolf and an alligator. How you about know, a I'm series of enormous Venus flat traps? Ooh, I, think I like what that. a lion. I, I think like about that. Those lazy, those lexi, lazy immigrants would be taking a nap. You yeah. crawl in, <laughs> being digested. Yeah. I was thinking the Rio Grande. If you were to inhabit it with lions and sea lions, the lions would be a way bigger problem. <laughs> they would be, I guess. I, I don't know. Sea, sea lions are, are they even aggressive? Yeah, I I, I oh, think I saw. It's is, is that a sea lion that bit that little girl in the ass and pulled her into the water? That that nah. famous little Reddit gif. That's always funny. <laughs> <You're> like, <sighs> um, I think they get really big. No, I, I would like it if our southern border was protected by all sorts of ferocious God. things. I would like. I would like some sort of a big mirror that's like a magnifying glass in the sky that could like beam down and burn like invaders. Yeah. I'd like, like, like some sort of eye of Sauron, some sort of Colossus of Rhodes that's animated and, and comes to life. I, I, I want it to aesthetically appear though, to just be an enormous magnifying glass, an old timey one. Mm -hmm. I'm okay with that. Yeah. And, and, it adds a little bit of class to the horror. But but I, I really just you know I, I'm I'm passionate about our borders and not just the southern border the the northern border too I think we should shoot any of those fuckers that that, that try to cross either border I'm either passionate way. about our eastern border the UK is coming again and I will not have it. <laughs> people think they're the done one... they're going to reconquer us they're going to try I think that we should have gotten rid of all those people on Hawaii when we conquered or bought it or whatever we did because they've just got. I don't know. I don't like They've those been people. sassy ever since, right? They've they been sassy mm -hmm. and racist, frankly. The biggest racist in this country are, are Hawaiians. I, I, I reach, brother. Preach. I, <laughs> if, if, if I were president, if I were president, um, I would I would I would take them off and make it Hawaiian. illegal to be Hawaiian. I would just make want them illegal. gone. Like, like 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 I feel like we could make up a story. Like like how many people live in Hawaii? Like what is it? What is it, Zach? Like two million, three million? But it's not all Hawaiians, right? It's just the Hawaiian Hawaiian. It's you know which ones it is. It's, <laughs> it, 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 it's it, all those fucking vowels. Brown those, skin, like, overweight, gotta go. Right? There's yep. three million people in Hawaii. I thought there was. There's some fat than tan that. guys, and we'll filter them out though. <laughs> 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 don't worry. Don't worry. If you're if you're a roofer from Alabama on vacation, don't worry. We won't. We won't get stuck. <laughs> right. up one one takes one his food. shirt off to prove how white he is. He's got <laughs> the lines. Have you ever? Seen no. Like, look how burned I am. See, <laughs> like all right, let him it's a farmer's tan. I saw a roofer one time, and his tan to me when I saw it, I, I was I was like a teenager, but but I remember thinking like that's like a disability that you have. Like you're so tan that you look wounded. <laughs> like, 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 like he was a different race. He had transcended into like some sort of Latin colors. You he know, was, yeah. um, progressive. How in, in like the fighting world, if you spot a dude with really um, 
cabbage ears. I'm messing it yeah, up. Yeah, cauliflower. Called? Cauliflower. Thank you. It, with really messed up cauliflower ears, then like it's like, oh, respect. This guy's a practitioner who's been at it for some period of time. As a lifeguard, we had people with leathery, destroyed, ugly, Ugh. ugly skin, tattoos <laughs> that look nothing like the day they got them, and it was like, uh, you know, they, they were like cauliflower ears. I don't believe it. I, I need to do some. I, I want to do some traveling soon. I need to. Uh, I need Where to. Oh, I don't know. It'd be cool to go to another. Uh, maybe to Europe somewhere. Um, seems like a fun time. You know. He's still based in Colorado right Where now. Where would be no. your first stop? I'm in. Uh, I'm in Georgia right now. I'm moving. Uh, well, I don't want to say exactly when, but by the end of the month, I think I'm gone. Should be gone from here. Nice to another place. Uh, I, I have not. I've been here in this home for like three years, and I didn't intend to be here more than six months it was initially like i need a place to lock down right now that's like affordable enough that i can keep paying it even if i'm in prison for the next two years <laughs> <laughs> um because i was like i don't know if i'm gonna get zero time or three years that's kind of what was in my head and uh i i didn't know so like i just kind of got this place and that was the idea at the time but i want out I'm, I, I don't I, I want out of here so that's happening very soon good i need to start packing oh Okay. So it's really procrastinate really packing. It sucks. It's unpleasant. I've never hired movers before, but I'm definitely hiring movers this time. I was gonna um, say, like it didn't sound like anything you would do. Why why would you do your packing? It sounds like exactly oh, the same thing you would Well, I definitely am gonna do the packing. I don't want anybody going through my stuff. They there's no way those people don't steal. There's no way you can send packers into a house and be like, yeah, put it all in boxes and send them Just to the Just do the packing place. stuff you really give a shit about that you're worried about get stolen first and then have them pack the rest. My stuff's mixed together. Like you could open a box and find money. Like, 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 literally, <laughs> like, literally, like, like, I was in a box the other day and found like four hundred dollars cash mixed in with some UFC gear and and a book about weed with kittens. The fuck? You just have like so a, no, living like a Skyrim dungeon. I was gonna say, you just it's find it's, loot. Uh, you just yeah, yeah, mix loot box. There's it's literally literally says with loot. Kyle. He's that, that, that what he just said. I think if I understand this correctly, is the last time you unpacked, you were so lazy about it that you couldn't hire a packer this time because there's too much shit mixed in there that you care about and you never made to find it. That's just how I store my gear. Like all my stuff is mixed together. When you kind open of in a pile, it, in, in a piles, yeah. In, in a, like, like, like you, you open yeah. any box, and there's no telling what's in there. They're not categorized. Um, like, like if you open the drawer, you're gonna find fucking sex toys and condoms, but you're also gonna find like an ID from eight years ago, and like maybe some like some sort of tactical harness so that you can repel. Like there's some gonna horrible be horrible weed. <laughs> so, so dry and crispy. <laughs> no, I went through and got all those crispy little bits out. But but like there were crispy bits around for a long time that I that I kept having to go into like the back corners of drawers and be like if somebody sees those crispy bits, there'll be trouble. <laughs> <laughs> and like and I'm like picking these little crispy bits out, like, <sighs> <sighs> like trying to get every little speck Just these of ancient nugs. Out. Because like even after like multiple raids, they leave like marijuana crumbs laying around, and it's like you guys. Last time they were here, they literally like like went into the back of a drawer and got all the crumbs. They did that. They charged me with crumbs last time. I, I think maybe on my paperwork it says I had bastards fifteen grams or maybe sixteen grams. It was literally measured out what I had. It was fourteen grams. It says it to the decimal point. Anything above that is crumbs they found. And I know they were crumbs because I'd have smoked them if they were anything but crumbs already. <laughs> the whole reason I was getting weed that day is because I was out of weed. <laughs> <laughs> I had no more. <laughs> That's the that worst, sucks. right? Like, like I, I thought I was about to like go get stoned as fuck and have a good day. <laughs> and instead, <I> got, <laughs> and instead we like start the arrest process. Uh, oh. so it's a real like divert you know the, the the road fort right there and it was like man i thought this was gonna be a pretty chill day i was gonna make nachos <laughs> life was simple at nine this morning <laughs> <laughs> oh man that was so wild i love that that like that day's like like every little bit of that day i remember you know there's days that you just completely forget because like mm -hmm. nothing happened that day like like all right. Oh, I, you know you did the same shit same shit different day that's a day I remember real well. <laughs> like that whole sure. day, you know, there were a lot of like um, um, memorable moments that 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 were they just kept coming one after another um, at a certain point. Now that was fun. I remember. Um, I, I my my favorite part was being in the drunk tank though with that moron 
and thinking like, look at this moron. He got caught stealing a shovel or something from his neighbor's shed and then going like, you're in the same cell. Right. <laughs> <laughs> they don't differentiate here. <laughs> yeah. Drunk shuffle guy got a don't do that again and a ass pad out of there probably. <laughs> you probably did, yeah. Yeah, my neighbor came by yesterday. I had my um I, I was you could see I had my garage door open and he could see my uh, all my stuff cuz I've put together a pretty good collection of uh of gym stuff recently and he he came over and he's like, "You got a whole gym in here." And I was like, "Almost, you know, I'm buying this that and the other." And uh Oh shit! Don't lose your train of thought here. What did he? What was the thing? The full gym. And he said, "You got a full gym here." Shovel pat on your ass. Mm. I just. Oh no! I was, no, I was telling. I know. I ended up telling him about the whole marijuana thing, and he was like, "I got caught." And this is a black guy. I got caught with half an ounce like a year ago. They gave me a ticket <laughs> and took my weed. That was the worst <laughs> part. They took my weed. I'm gonna like, guess yeah. he didn't have a YouTube presence. I was like, I was like, they yeah. took my weed too. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good line. It was not the worst part. <laughs> <laughs> they took my weed too. <laughs> In all the two months of my life. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, please. If it had been two months, it would have been no sweat. If if the if the wheels yeah, of justice true. moved a little bit fucking faster, <laughs> if they could have been like, ah, we got you. All right, so here's what we're gonna do. We can drag this on for three or four years or how about you spend two months over here in this place? All right, sign me up. Let's go. Let's just go and get this over with. I remember when I asked the investigator, and he was like, oh, these things. Kyle, I got one right now. It's been dragging on for four years. And I remember thinking, like, no way my shit gets drug on for four years. I'm going to push the wheels along if I have to. Yeah, about four years, something like that. No way, I'm getting caught up for two years of probation. Yeah, it's crazy. And and then like right, and then Delta Eight being like legal and so fucking powerful, uh, like like in the wake of all that is is such a a silly thing too. It's so it strong. I have to be careful with that Pause that there. stuff I, they sent us. You told me Delta Eight was less strong now. Explore. Different kinds, different they kinds. Got like a like, THCO like, and all, all sorts of different things now. Is it the different kinds or the um, inconsistencies with the packaging and the real like honor? So, so I uh, think yeah. that um, one of the things that that when when vaping in general first started out, and people would be like, "Oh, people are getting popcorn lung and they're getting lead," and it's like you only get poisoned by these things if you buy the most shitty imported Chinese stuff. Mm -hmm. Everybody in America who's into this is kind of like they don't. It, it's kind of like that myth of the candy with the razor blades in it. Yeah, like, like dude, nobody's putting razor blades in your kid's candy, and nobody's poisoning your vape juice either. And and so like, I think that the quality has been consistent across the board. It's just that I've I've started using um, more potent stuff, uh, and and also like the different variants. I'll call them of hemp or whatever the fuck. Because THCO just hits so much stronger than Delta Eight, and uh, HHC does as well. Um, I tried some of that last night. I didn't realize when I was buying it that it was HHC, and who knows if it was. But I went to this like bootleg little South Carolina store. This has two prices on it, and <laughs> it just says Starburst. Guarantee they didn't get licensing from from Starburst. No way, they don't. And on there's a sticker that says THCO. A sticker with a QR code on the back. It just don't says scan that. THC. That'll affect your phone if you scan that. Don't do that. So <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not. I'm not fucking scanning this shit. I'm not doing anything with this shit. Um, those. Those. Real question is, did it work? Oh yeah. Well, I haven't tried this kind yet. This is unopened for later. But the HHC kind, it was called One Up, and it was a bootleg picture of Mario with like an eye patch on, and it was like a little mushroom <laughs> on there, and it was like four peach o's peach rings yeah just four of them didn't say how many milligrams were in the package didn't tell me how much it just said one up and then a picture of mario unlicensed <laughs> and, I, <laughs> and, and i ate the first one and then went to dinner my wife was like you feeling it and i'm like halfway through i'm like yeah i'm, I'm feeling pretty good feeling pretty pretty ripped and i realized they were going to be strong and good so i went back to the room we weren't doing anything the rest of the night took all the rest of them <laughs> and just got 
<laughs> silly hot. I thought you and your wife were going to split them. I don't know why I thought that. No, she she has her own gummies. She likes the really weak ones, so she'll take nibbles mm. off of those. But I was just like, <laughs> I'm on vacation. I'm I'm about to you know finish up the Blues game. It doesn't look like we're going to win this one. Let's get blasted high. So at the <laughs> very least, when the Blues lose, I'll be like, I'm so high, I just want to read my fantasy book, not be upset about this. <laughs> and so... <laughs> And so I did do that. I sat in the bed, and while my wife slept, I read my fantasy book for hours, watched the Blues win. It was a great evening. Great I think Asian Taylor sounds again. a little like Hank Hill. I'm so high. <laughs> I'm so <laughs> high. I can read my fantasy book. I can speak book. Chinese. <laughs> I read my fantasy novel. <laughs> I, I've been listening to so much of that fucking Hank Hill rap that Taylor turned me on to. Oh, no. <laughs> that shit like, is like, so like, funny. Like, he's Hank called, Trill. It's Hank Trill, and he's a legitimately good rapper with like crazy hard lyrics. And it's like, dude, some of this shit is like hard. The harder than the hardest of gangster rap. He's like, <laughs> one of the, he's like last. He says something like, "The last guy that fucked with me, I tortured him for three days and shot him in the face." Have you heard that lyric? Like, like that's just <laughs> there's a lot just, of them. That's just in there. And I, I was like, God damn, for three days. Like, what he, like, do? like it's funny because like the guy he does the voice really well yeah and so it'll go seamlessly from like a bar about like i love propane it's the best way to cook your meat and then the next bar will be like i'm gonna there rape you, go. you and your entire family and it's like oh my god like you're the I, propane guy but now you're talking about murdering I, uh he's talking about his 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 like minions and how he sicks them on people how how he has Dale. Dale Drizzle is a very funny character. Yeah. He does Dale's voice even better than he does Hank's. I, I like Dale's a tough voice. Like, yeah, I can only even kind of do him if I'm yelling. <laughs> like that. That's the only way I can get Hank. Your boy's playing with Joseph. <laughs> Not playing with Joseph. Your son's trying to do something gay with him. Like that. that would... <laughs> it's like Chopper make you dance. Hop scotch. <laughs> I'm listening to this and I'm like, that's that's actually really good. Yeah. <laughs> like, it's just, I it's really funny. It makes me laugh every time. I would pay money to see uh, uh, the animated music videos, like done by like Mike Judge's team, like 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 the legitimate ones. Oh, I, I I sent this to you guys. I know Woody saw it, but it's that it's that thing from the Johnny Depp uh, trial where he had like texted one of his friends for like.